From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of Congo Christmas. The village of the Karmiki tribe consisted of a rambling collection of thatched huts, a lean-to where the women ground corn and cassava, a palaver house and other tribal buildings, and a spiked boma that enclosed the village in a vain attempt to keep out the terrors of the jungle. But one building in the Maji stood out from the others. It was of costly teakwood and mahogany. Its door was of burnished copper, and fierce guards stood at its entranceway. This was the temple of Miyomoko, moon god of the Karmiki. The single eye of the moon god, a priceless star sapphire in the center of its forehead, glowered malevolently in the near darkness of the jungle dusk as a handsome young warrior placed a sacrifice of wild fruit at the feet of his idol. Great Miyomoko, forgive Kedi for what he has done. Kedi not know what he do to make moon god angry, but now he not catch fish in his nets. Animals not come to his traps. His cattle run away. And Keddy not find them. Why you are angry, great Miyomoko? I will tell you why Miyomoko is angry, son of Kamiki. Oh, the high priest. Miyomoko is not angry with you, Keddy. He is angry with all of the Kamiki tribe. But because you are strongest and bravest of the young warriors, he has selected you to redeem the people of tribe. That is why my cattle run away? Why I no catch fish or animals? It was a sign so that you would know you were the Matula. The chosen one? Uh, chosen for what? You know that Miyamoko has been the god of your people since the beginning of time. The deal? You know that many of your tribe have given their lives to protect the great star sapphire that is the eye of the moon god. The deal? That many, including the father, the grandfather, and the great grandfather of Miyamoko's high priest, have died for the moon idol? Yes, yes, I know all of this, high priest. And yet, with each passing day, more people of tribe turn from Miyamoko and worship a false god. You mean those who go to missionary? Nidio. Unless missionary is destroyed, unless people of Karmiki return to Miyamoko, fish will no longer come to our streams, our cattle will all disappear, our fields will be barren, and our children will die unborn. But, but what is Keddy to do? Tonight, when the moon is high... You, the chosen one, must go to the missionary building. You must find the man, Collier, and you must kill. I, high priest of Miyamoko, have spoken. On the opposite end of the village, from the temple of Miyamoko, stood the small bamboo hut that housed the missionary school and church that the Reverend Andrew Collier had founded three years before. A distinct contrast to the imposing structure of the moon god, the fragile shelter was in a bad state of disrepair. The Reverend Collier had always meant to fix the roof and replace the siding, but other matters always seemed more important. Now, although the hour was close to midnight, he continued to work by the light of a flickering lantern. By his side, at a long table in what was ordinarily the classroom, stood Ama, a lovely native girl, who was his best pupil, his most devout convert. You are almost finished, Reverend Collier. Uh, finished? <laughs> I've hardly begun, Arma. I have another 200 Christmas presents to wrap. 200? But there are not half that many Christians in the entire village. We'd be very poor Christians if we gave presents only to those who agreed with our beliefs. Would you hand that spool of ribbon over there? Thank you. There are yet many days until Christmas. Why must all the packages be wrapped tonight? You, you can never tell what might come up. Now, I don't want to have old Santa Claus come along and find me not ready. Says it, please, Arma. It will be a wonderful Christmas, even though there are so few of us Christians. There are more than there were last year, Arma, and more last year than the year before that. We have much to be thankful for. I'm ready for the next toy. Oh, <laughs> look at this one, <laughs> a tiny keyboard. <laughs> yeah, it's a rather a cute little dog. Oh, yes. But I'm afraid there won't be nearly enough toys to go around. I sent another letter to the church foundation, but they... 
Oh, well, they couldn't possibly have sent all the things I asked for. You are sad, Reverend Collier? Not exactly. But I keep remembering those Christmases at home. There was always snow on the ground. Snow? There was a window in the choir loft. That was before I was ordained, you see. At that time, I played the organ, led the choir. Well, before the services started, I used to look down at the people crossing the snowy field on their way to church. In the vestibule, they'd remove their overcoats and shake off the snow. And then the big doors at the back of the church would open and they'd start to pour in. That was my signal to begin. Usually on Christmas morning, the first hymn I played was, Come All Ye Faithful. And they were faithful in those days, Armour. And as they entered the church, you could... Oh, someone comes late at night. Come in. The door to the mission is never locked. Oh, Katie. Armour, I not think I find you here so late. I have been helping the Reverend tie Christmas packages. You go now, Amma. Why? Why have you come here, Keddy? Keddy has business with Reverend Collier. But you have always refused to come into the missionary, even when I begged you. Well, you should have gone hours ago, Amma. Keddy has business with me. I'm happy. I've waited long for this day. Go, Amma. As you say, Reverend. Good night. Good night, Keddy. You look sorely troubled, Keddy. May I help you? You can speak freely. We're alone. The deal. Enemy of Miyamoko. Great moon god of Kamiki. Now we are alone. In just a moment, we'll return to our exciting story of Congo Christmas. Almost a year had passed since Tarzan had visited the village of the Karmiki. Now he was on his way back from the city of Andumara, and since the elephant trail he followed came within a few miles of the Karmiki crawl, he decided to renew old friendships. As he made his way easily through the dense jungle vegetation, Nakima, the tiny monkey who was his frequent companion, danced at his side, chattering happily. Suddenly, as Tarzan reached the entrance of the village, he stopped in his tracks. From the temple of Miyomoko came the frenzied chanting of the high priest and his acolytes, and the low beating of the Moti Nagoma, the drum of death. Tarzan rushed to the shrine of the moon god and attempted to enter, but the powerful hands of the temple guards reached out for him, and massive bodies blocked his path. The beating of the Moti Nagoma has been outlawed, and I demand to see your high priest at once. I do not wish to cause bloodshed, but unless you take your hands from me and step aside so that I can enter, I shall... Pass! Pass! Jumbo, high priest of Miyomoko. Why do you come during ritual, Tarzan? I was on my way to see Nagako, your chief, when I heard the sounds of the Mati Nagoma. Whose death are you plotting now? We do not plot a death. This is but a vestige of an old custom. A custom I know well. Your chief has long kept himself neutral in the struggle between you and others who do not believe in your fanatic religion. But I am not neutral. Tell me whose death you plan. You do not frighten me, Lord of the Jungle. Soon the people of Karmiki will return to the obedience of Miyomoko. As the moon god was in years gone by, so will it be again. And none will dare defy its power. The missionary. It's his death you plan. By this time he is already dead. You are too late to stem the will of Miyomoko. With Nakima dodging his heels, Tarzan ran swiftly through the slumbering village. Ahead, he could see the light of a flickering lantern from inside the mission. Perhaps the life of its founder also flickered. Tarzan reached the ramshackle building at last, and he flung the door open wide. Reverend Collier, you're all right. Of course I'm all right. Come in. Close the door after you. Well, if, if, if you're busy, no, I... No, no, no. Keddy was just leaving. The deal was just leaving. Keddy. So you were the Matula. Yes. Matula? The chosen one, chosen to kill an enemy of Miyomoko. Did your nerve fail you, Keddy, or did Reverend Kalia prove stronger than he looks? Oh, you're mistaken, Tarzan. Keddy made no attempt upon my life. He, uh, oh, he, he came here to help me tie these Christmas packages. Oh, and the razor-sharp kizu that lies on the ground, it was not meant as an instrument of death? Keddy was merely using the knife to, uh, to cut ribbons. I want you to leave now, Keddy. Neither of us will say anything about this to anyone. Santa, Reverend Collier. And good night. Good night, Tarzan. 
You're making a mistake, Reverend. Keddy failed once, but the fanatical followers of Miyamoko will soon bolster his wavering spirits. And even should he fail again, there are others to take his place. We must go to Nagako. He's a just chief, and he'll put new restrictions upon the high priest, and he'll punish Keddy. Punishment will not help him. He's deeply troubled and needs help. I failed in my effort to find out the source of his trouble. But I can never succeed in my mission until I understand the Kamiki and their problems. I will spend tomorrow watching Keddy. I'll try to uncover the source of his trouble, and I'll keep him from making another attempt on your life. But you must keep a sharp lookout for others. Death might come from any direction and at any moment. All the next day, Tarzan shadowed Keddy. It seemed amazing that the youth was unaware of his presence, for Nakima, who clung to Tarzan's shoulder, chattered shrilly. But Keddy was lost in a world of his own. At that moment, he was tending his small flock of sheep, but he was so absorbed in thought that a tiny lamb wandered off unnoticed. And as the lamb reached the fringe of the jungle, Numa the lion drew close, attracted by the scent of a tasty morsel. The lamb stumbled uncertainly, its tiny ears raised in frightened query. It turned to rejoin its flock. But now the lion crouched low, powerful muscles flexed, and the king of beasts leaped toward its helpless prey. But at that exact moment, a bronze white savage catapulted from the trees, and a shaft of gleaming steel found its mark. My lamb, my lamb, Carson. Kitty's little lamb wander off. Where is... Your lamb is safe through no fault of your own, Kitty. Oh, not Kitty's fault. His sheep, cattle wander off and cannot be found. Fish not bite on his line or enter his traps. Animals not caught by his snares. Is because Miyomoko is angry. Kitty is bewitched. Kitty, I've been following you all day, and I can tell you why these misfortunes befall you. Why? Because you have no time to properly tend your nets or your traps. I, I watched you spend the entire morning peering through the window of the mission. I saw you stand for hours this afternoon near the hut where the women bake bread. And I observed you following the maidens when they went to the stream to fetch water. Tarzan saw Keddy do these things? I did. Keddy, you're so busy trying to catch glimpses of that girl, Amma, that you have no time for the other matters. When she's not within sight, you're busy dreaming of her. Naturally, your cattle and your sheep wander off unnoticed. The serious malady from which you suffer is known as love. Is true. That is Keddie's great trouble. <laughs> trouble? Well, if you're in love with Amma, why do you not ask to make marriage with her? Although you've lost some of your possessions, you surely have enough left for the marriage price. Nadio, have marriage price, but Amma not marry me. She doesn't return your love? Is not that. Her, uh, her family doesn't think you would make a good husband? Family of Amma think well of Keddie. Well, then what in the world is it? Amma is Christian. I am what she called pagan. Reverend Collier say she cannot marry me. High priest of Miyamoko say I cannot marry her. Oh, so that's the root of all the trouble. Keddy, gather your flock and return to the village. Before another day has passed, I'll arrange a meeting between Reverend Collier and the high priest of the moon god. Perhaps I can solve your problems. <laughs> I, the high priest of Miyamoko, will not leave the temple to visit the intruder. The Reverend Collier has agreed to come here to discuss the matter. He may enter, but only in the custody of four of my strongest guards. You are to be alone in the temple when he comes. The guards and the other priests and the sentries are to be removed. You're to meet his equals. And why should I agree to such ridiculous conditions? Because your chief, the mighty Nagako, knows nothing of your instructions to Keddy. Unless you agree to the meeting as I have outlined it, you'll be told... Nagako has no patience with plans for murder, and you shall feel the fury of his anger and the power of his authority. I agree to your terms. Tell the Reverend Collier to enter the temple when the hour of midnight has come again. And so, in the dead of night, the missionary met with the high priest and they discussed earnestly the love of a pagan youth and a Christian maiden. A hundred yards from the temple, the people of Karmiki stood motionless, intent. The temple guard stood in readiness, and Tarzan near them watched anxiously. Even Nakima seemed filled with the importance of the moment. He dashed off frequently, and then returned to whimper at the feet of his master. 
After what seemed like hours of endless waiting, the Reverend Collier came down the temple steps. Ama and Keddy rushed toward him. Oh, you, you. Oh, Reverend Collier, you are safe. Of course I'm safe, Ama. We had a most friendly discussion of your problem. And the decision. The decision, Reverend Collier. Well, uh, uh, I gave ground and the high priest gave ground, though he was forced to consult many scrolls and sacred records. Yes? Finally, we arrived at a compromise. You are to study the teachings of Mimoko for three days. And Keddie is to study the word of Jesus. Three days is not much time to observe a religion. But at the end of that time... Fast! Fast! Stop! Leave! Do not let him get away! Stop what, thief? What are you talking about, High Priest? Several times while we spoke, I left the Reverend Collier alone. And when he was gone, I found that it was missing. The great star sapphire. The eye of Miyamoku. But I stole nothing. He would not steal. He is good. This is some plot of yours. You pretended to make a reasonable agreement and then... There is no agreement. There never will be. The man Collier has defiled our God. Your threats to tell the chief of my plans do not frighten me, Tarzan. Let him know. Let everyone know that I, the high priest of Miyamoku, will have revenge. Every Christian in the village shall be killed. And the man Collier shall be first. In just a moment, the strange conclusion of Congo Christmas. The anger of the high priest had reached the point of hysteria. And now the disciples of Miyamoko surged forward to overpower the missionary. But in the instant of the attack, the pitifully few members of the cleric's parish formed a protective circle about him. The tiny band wavered before the savage onslaught of the multitude. But in that moment, Tarzan jumped to the steps of the temple. In his hand, he held his great bow. And at his side hung a quiver filled with metal-tipped arrows. The first one who places a hand on Reverend Collier will get an arrow through his heart. Do not fall back, disciples of Miyamoko. Collier must be killed. No one be killed. Great Chief Nagako. Great Chief, great Chief Nagako. Your high priest has accused the Reverend Collier of stealing the star sapphire of the moon god. It must be plain to you that he could be guilty of no such crime. What is true can be proved. Search him. Oh, he is a holy man. You cannot believe It's all right, Arma. I've been accused of a theft, and it's only right that I should be searched. As a matter of fact, I insist on it. I search you, Kalia. Chief Nagako, I'm sure the missionary did not steal the gem, and since no one else entered or left the temple, it's plain that this is only a plot to discredit him and the work he's done among your people for three years. No one guilty until proved so. No one innocent until trial has been held. Well, high priest... The eye of Miyamoko is not on him. He has passed it to someone else. I know he is guilty. Tomorrow, when dawn has come, we hold trial. Nagako, chief of all Kamiki, has spoken. Why, why do you not invite me inside the mission, Reverend Collier? We can talk out here. There is much talk among the natives... Although the High Council did not find you guilty, there are those who insist now that you are concealing something. Why? Oh, surely you're not that blind, Reverend. This morning, a large safari arrived with many packages for you, and one crate so large that it took two elephants to carry. You, you've taken these things inside, and the door has remained closed. Can't you see that you're inviting suspicion? Perhaps. Perhaps. Even Chief Nagako is beginning to believe that you stole the sapphire in order to pay for these goods you had delivered. Uh, I ask you to tell me what the crates contained. Well, it would be easy for you to climb to that tree over there and look down into the mission. The roof's still open in many places. I will not look in without your invitation. And Nagako has forbidden the others to do so. But even my friendship and the spirit of justice that Nagako holds dear will not prevail long against the, the growing temper of the Karmiki. Tarzan, for three years I've taught the unvarnished principles of Christianity. It's not enough. If I'm to succeed... I must match the colorful ceremonies of the native rites. These people will not accept the word of the Bible for miracles. They must see them with their own eyes. And, and you intend to perform a miracle? No, that I cannot do. But I'm inviting every member of the tribe to come here tomorrow. Perhaps on Christmas Day I can reveal something here that they will accept as a miracle. 
It's my only chance for personal safety so that I may continue to fight for a cause that I know is right. It's late, Keddy. You'd best go to Yahima. Perhaps in the morning we can try to straighten things out. Is no way straightened. Now Keddy won't be Christian. But high priests say never let Keddy go. Puts curse on marriage. Well, things may look different by tomorrow, Keddy. Tomorrow's Christmas, and I have a feeling things are going to happen. Keddy cannot wait long. Inside is sick. His heart... Shh, shh, someone coming. I go. But try help poor Keddy. Be well, Tarzan. Go well, Keddy. Quiet, quiet, Nikima. The hour is late. Who is it? You are alone. Except for Nakima, my small monkey. Who comes? It, it is I. A high priest of Miyomoko. Come to call on me in a simple... Huh? No longer am I proud and haughty, Tarzan. What? My father and my father's father and his father protected the priceless eye of Miyomoko. They gave their lives that the honor of the moon idol should not be blemished. But I have failed. Would that I were dead. Your death would not solve the mystery. If only some miracle would return the eye of the moon god. Tarzan, you must help me. Perhaps if you were to speak with Reverend Kaya, he could help you. He, he studied a great deal about the miracles of the past. If only he could perform some miracle for me, I would be his friend. No longer would I oppose his ways. If only he could perform a miracle that would restore the sapphire, the honor of Miyamoku would be saved. I know no more about the location of the missing gem than you do. And I'm reasonably certain Reverend Collier doesn't either, but he, he hints at a miracle that is to happen tomorrow. I suggest that you come to his Christmas party. Christmas in the Congo. The dawn came early and the sun was strong. But even before the daylight had come, the entire village had gathered outside of the tiny mission. Inside, the Reverend Collier peered out nervously. The church foundation had been generous beyond his fondest dreams, but everything they'd sent him might be in vain. Now, as he nodded to Amma, the doors and the windows were thrown open. In front of the strange-tempered crowd, he could see the high priest, Tarzan, Nagako, the aging chief, Keddy, and the others. They watched him intently as he sat down before a huge box-like structure, a strange affair that had required two elephants to carry. And then, as he'd done so long ago, on those Christmases before he'd been ordained, the man Collier set to his task. Look! Eye of moon god fall from heaven! Oh, from nowhere! Miracle. Right at the feet of the high priest! Miracle. It is a miracle. miracle! The eye of the moon god dropped from the heaven at the sound of your magic. This is a miracle. One I didn't plan. We are friends now, Reverend Collier. Please make more magic with the box that plays music. Perhaps it will bring a charm upon the Christmas wedding. Amma, did you hear that? Oh, yes, Kitty, I heard. Hey, let us walk short distance away, Tarzan. All right, Nagako. I am old, Tarzan. Soon I will go to long sleep. I would like to know how miracle happened. I do not pretend to understand miracles, great chief. But now that I look back, the only one who could have slipped into the temple and stolen the jewel was my tiny monkey, Nakima. It's also possible that he hid it in the one place that your people were told to stay away from, the roof of the mission house. Ah, the deal... It could be, as you say. And, of course, the, the roof has many holes, and the vibrations of the organ might easily have shaken it loose. But then, maybe we could be wrong. Perhaps it, it was a miracle. All of us connected with the production of Tarzan join in wishing you a very happy Christmas. And we invite you to remain for a preview of our next story.
Tarzan deserts his jungle to confront the complex maze of a modern city when he travels to Johannesburg. And there, in a world so alien to his own, he meets an enemy more dangerous than the savage beasts of the primordial forest, more ruthless than the jungle-crazed men he's encountered in the past, more destructive than the angry elements of the Congo. Tarzan fights an unseen adversary in the hand of death. Included in our cast were Jack Moyles, G.G. Pearson, Bob Bruce, and Charlie Lung. Tarzan, a transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. Listen to our next story, The Hand of Death, another thrilling episode of The Lord of the Jungle. <laughs> 